Hello, I'm Richard O'Neill, storyteller and author, and I'd like to tell you part three of Little Geordie. Now, if you remember at the end of part two, Geordie and Mary, the farm worker and the seamstress, the needlework person, they had a bit of a problem, and that was that Geordie had lost his job at the farm and he was trying to find a new one. And on the way back from his job seeking, he saw some puppeteers and he became fascinated by these puppets. And he thought maybe that could be an alternative job. Maybe that could be his new career. But then he realized that having had a go at the puppets and getting all the strings tangled and everything, it probably wasn't. And the puppeteers did say, you know, it takes a long, long time to get good at this and to get good enough for people to be able to pay you money if you're entertaining them. So he went on with a fairly heavy heart and Mary being a very positive and a very uh, practical person said, do you know what, let's just sleep on it, let's just think about this because if you have this desire to be a puppeteer and we do have this wonderful puppet toy called Little Geordie which you could maybe turn into a puppet, then maybe we could do something. And Geordie wasn't convinced, he thought, well, you know, Little Geordie is a lovely wooden doll but it's not a puppet and you couldn't put strings on him so he couldn't even work the strings anyway. But Mary was much more positive and that night when they went to bed she was thinking and by the next morning she'd woken up and they were having breakfast and she said Geordie I've got it I know what we can do and Geordie was still a bit skeptical he wasn't convinced but Mary said look I tell you what we need to do you need to go and get your tools you need to get that drill thing and you need to put a hole in the back of little Geordie and I've got this piece of broom that we're going to cut off and it'll work brilliantly and Geordie was still not convinced. He said, well, well, how can putting a hole in the back of it? She said, look, just do as I ask and just see. And he did. They drilled a hole in the back of little Geordie. They put a piece of wood in the back of little Geordie. And she said, look, pick him up and now move him. And he moved. He was just like a puppet. He was like this. And they put a piece of wood in the back, a piece off the broom. And now, Geordie could control him. And he was amazed. And Mary said, see, look, now what you need to do is you need to go to the town on Saturday. You need to get a little stool, set up perhaps somewhere on a corner, or maybe in the square, or on the edge of the square, and try and entertain the children and the families, as the puppeteers did. Well, Geordie was really nervous. It's the first time he'd ever done this. And he went along and he took the stool and he sat in the town and he went like that. And it really wasn't that good, to be fair. And the people looked and most of them moved on. But there was one little girl who stopped. She was quite fascinated. And he got little Geordie to sit down like this. And the girl looked. And little Geordie started to move a little bit. And the girl clapped her hands and she smiled and that was enough for Geordie to go home that evening and to think how can I make this better how can I make this more appealing to people and Mary said well do you know there's an old harmonica that used to belong to my dad and nobody plays it maybe you could use that so he picked up the harmonica and he couldn't really play it but it made some sound so the next day when he went along to the town and he sat on the stool in the same position. He got little Geordie and he made him dance to the tune. But of course, there wasn't enough sound. It wasn't really making a lot of sound. So it wasn't carrying and it wasn't really that entertaining. Then he had an idea. If little Geordie's gonna dance, maybe he's gonna dance like some of those old gypsy people who used to dance on a piece of wood to make the sound go even further and to get the beat and go along with the music. And that's what he did. And people came from far and wide around the town and they danced and they clapped their hands and the children were trying to mimic everything that little Geordie did. Little Geordie was doing funny things. He was bowing, he was sitting down, he was doing funny things with his legs and the children laughed. And then he started to play a little game with the children and he said, listen, when I look away, if little Geordie is messing about, will you shout and tell me? And of course it was a really fun game because when Geordie would look away, 
little Geordie would mess about and the children would shout, he's moving, he's moving. And everybody clapped and had so much fun. And then the people started throwing money into the hat. And Geordie soon was making more money than he ever earned on the farm. And everybody had so much fun. And for a long, long time, Uncle Geordie was very, very old. He was making good money, entertaining people and having fun. And you know what? Even to this day, with little Geordie, we go around and we entertain and we have fun. And it's all about clapping your hands and singing. Now, do you think we might be able to just join in with a little song? I think we could do that. So he's going to go like this and it's going to go. Can you clap your hands as we go along? He's going to go. Can you dance, little Jody? Can you dance all around? Can you dance through the village? Can you dance through the town? Can you dance, little Jody? Can you dance real slow? Can you dance, little Jody? Can you dance all day? And that's what he used to do. Now, I hope you can remember this story and little Jody and maybe make up your own song and sing and dance around. So that's the end of our story, and I'm glad to say it had a very, very happy ending.